continue with the series um, of anxiety disorder in this COVID-19 era and um, it's quite unfortunate that we have this virus that is taking away lives and we need to be very careful out there. So um, the previous video we were discussing about you know the medications and the therapeutic measures that the professionals put in place so that situational anxiety disorders um, patients or clients will get, get some help and get out and come out of it gradually. So some of the things that we were discussing about preventative measures and then um, things that will help the individual that is not going to allow any sort of re-occurring or re-occurrence of that situation to happen. So they'll go through questions with you. You have to be coming up or saying individual things that are private to you. That is very, sometimes it's a secret that you need to talk about because if you don't talk about it, you're going to get a wrong diagnosis. And if you get a wrong diagnosis, you're going to get wrong treatment and wrong medication. And that is going to you know, mess you up. So, in order for you to get a good treatment, you need to be very transparent, you need to be very clear with your symptoms, you need to be very honest and modest with your answers, so that when they ask you, for example, that what triggers it, and you go and say that um, air, or when there is a strong wind when I go out that triggers it. Meanwhile, maybe it's about cars. When you see big cars, it triggers your I'm just giving an example, it, trig it triggers your your reactions or it triggers your disorder. So give your professional, give your psychologist, give your psychiatrist a very transparent and a very honest answer. Don't lie. If you lie, you're not going to get a good treatment. You're not going to get a good treatment regime. Right? Okay. So, other treatments for situational anxiety include relaxation techniques and hobbies. Exercising and participation in sports has been proven to relieve stress, which is typically the rooted cause of the anxiety. Yoga is a popular option because not only is it a form of exercise but it's also assist with relaxation and meditation hypnosis is a more alternative form of treatment so you can see that it's not all about medication 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 there are other forms of physical sort of activities that will get you out of your situational anxiety disorder it becomes if it becomes a, a disorder it becomes a problem Meditation is one, hypnosis is one, relaxation techniques is one, booking for some kind of gym instructor to go, you know, take you through some exercise regimes that will also help. Swimming is going to help you as well. So you see, there are a whole lot of games, some, some, some people play games to get out of their anxieties and there are so many games there's football there's tennis there's draft there's chess you name it there's a whole kind of there's, there's the whole kind of games that you you can go through so there are structured activities that will you know sort of move you away from your stress and your disorders so it's not only medication that solves problems. They go through all these things with you. So please, when you have a disorder and you go out there, you have an appointment with your clinician, please and please and please and please, be honest, don't lie, be modest, be transparent, so that your treatment will improve so that your condition will improve, so that your treatment will be tailored directly and specifically to you as an individual. Because if you don't give honest 
and critical, transparent answers to whatever question they ask you, they can't help you. They'll give you wrong diagnosis, one, they'll give you wrong medication, and it's not going to help your system. Or your mental faculty is not going to help you. Because there are some structural sort of hobbies and techniques that you can use to come out of your situational anxieties. You can exercise, you can have yoga, that is a combination of meditation and, you know, some form of exercise. It brings your whole mind into a, some kind of a still and peaceful area that you can meditate and then, you know, alleviate that stress that is bogging you down. So you see, it's not all about medication, as I always say. Your clinician can take you through all these options. And when you go through all these options, you pick what you really want to do. If it's relaxation techniques, if it's breathing exercises that you have to do, breathing in and out. If it's about listening to music that relaxes you, you can do that. If it's about dancing, you can dance. If it's about swimming, you can swim. Anything that will take you off that track of anxiety. So it's not all about going to see a clinician and then they pump you with drugs. No, it's not like that. You go through all these options and then you pick and choose and start doing it. Start going into the activities that you will prefer and then after a period of time, you'll be evaluated, you'll be assessed to check whether it's working for you or not. And then if it's not working, they can change it. And then we keep on doing it to the time they realize that, oh, nothing is working for you. So maybe Prozac is going to do, maybe Diazepam is going to do, maybe Lorazepam is going to do. So it depends on the individual. If you want to get remedy, it depends on yourself. If you want to get healing to come to you, it depends on how compliant you are. Because some of the patients, some of the clients are not compliant when it comes to medication and when it comes to sort of therapeutic regimes. They are not compliant. So let's say if they put you on an exercise regime for about maybe two days a, a week and you do it one day a week, and you are still stressed, or you don't even go at all, you don't even attend at all, and you are still experiencing your situational anxiety, you are not helping yourself. Because the clinician can't do it for you. You have to do it yourself. So in terms of those who want to get rid of maybe their alcoholism and all that, you have to be determined that no, I'm getting rid of this. If you don't get that determination, nobody's going to do it for you. So when it comes to these things, you have to be determined to go through that so that your stress levels is going to come down. So we will touch on childhood anxiety disorders. That is page 110 of my book. Children as well as adults experience feelings of anxiety, worry, and fear when facing different situations, especially those involving new experiences. So everybody goes through it. You can't run away from it. It's part of life. Everybody goes through some kind of anxiety one way or the other. But when it's persistent, when it's consistent, when it's intrusive, when it's excessive, when it's inappropriate, when it's uncontrollable, when it is lasting, when it has been there for quite a long time, after six months and it's still there, it's been there, you are not even attending to that particular situation. That's when it becomes a disorder. That when it becomes a problem that you need to check it out. So everybody has it. 
So let's carry on. However, if anxiety is no longer temporary and begins to interfere with the child's normal function or do harm to their learning, then it means there is a 